Yo, what's up guys? This is the official how to use Molotel markers or how I use Molotel markers tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I'm going to take you through step by step and basically show the exact process and all the details on exactly what I do. Like I sometimes I've shown little things and I've put like step 1 on parts of my videos, step two, step three, so on, just to show kind of what I'm doing, but I've never gone in depth on it and everybody's always asking me to. Um, I'm not doing it because everybody's asking me to, I'm doing it because I finally actually feel like I want to do it. So I'm gonna do that on a piece of uh, basically Molotow A4 pad paper. I'm not gonna do a huge piece or anything. I'm just gonna do like a basic, probably a flower piece because I can do flowers pretty simply. I don't have to like do any extra, um, you know, line work or, or rulering or anything like that. I can just kind of freehand it and show you basically the simple steps uh, that I go through to do my pieces. I'm gonna get a little bit depthy on some of this stuff just talking wise, but generally it's just gonna be a simple, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, all the way up to, I think I have eight steps written down that I kind of go through. And then there's like a little bit of detail in certain things that I'll talk about as I'm doing the video. So we're gonna get into it. I hope this is what you guys are what you guys have been wanting and um, yeah, let's let's do it. All right, so normally when I do a piece, I usually have a sketch on like a piece of paper. So for example, obviously, you know, you might have a sketch in your sketchbook. There's, that's a shitty sketch. Let's, uh, can't give that away. Okay, let's just say I use this stupid dinosaur guy. I'm not actually gonna use him, but let's just say, I, I don't even like this piece. But the point is, let's say that was a finished sketch piece and I liked it, I would then obviously redraw that in the vanilla pastel marker. You can use yellow as well. Um, it's best when you do a sketch on a canvas. This is a piece of paper, but it works the same way. Um, it's best when you do a sketch on the canvas with the Molotows using a light, light, light color. So sometimes I've used like baby, baby blue, but most often I use the, the vanilla pastel because it's super light and you can go over it no problems with just one layer of any color of paint. Um, and I feel like it just works best for a sketch. So really quick, I'm gonna do a little sketch um, I'm gonna time lapse each like sketch thing or every like time I fill something in I'm gonna kind of talk about it before I do it and then I'm gonna speed that part up so I can get through it quick and get to the next step first thing you have to do no matter what with these fucking markers every time always you got to make sure you shake it really really well you got to make sure the pigment is well mixed and uh, if you don't you're gonna end up having like probably some blotchy looking stuff you're gonna have like an uneven color and it's not gonna come out very nice also one of the things that I do that's very important in my opinion is to dab off the marker when you first start so that you can get the uh because what happens is the the paint here on the tip when you're not using the marker sits and then the pigment actually kind of unmixes in the tip and so it comes out pretty thin sometimes this case is fine because i used this marker yesterday but yeah so i just do this little dabby thing make sure it's uh nice and clear and then now i'll get to my sketch All right, so let's just say that's my piece. I know it's not a very good piece, that's not the point. The point is I'm gonna show you the steps and these are, once again, like I said, these are the steps that I use. It's not, like there's people who use Molotows everywhere. There's a lot of graffiti artists who use them and they probably use them much differently than I do. I'm just going by the steps that I would normally do. Um, one thing I wanna mention is, so right now I'm doing flowers. This process that I'm showing you is exactly how I do it even with characters and with backgrounds. So. Basically, it's gonna go in a quick set of steps, which is you do the pre-sketch, which I have here, then you do the main fill of it, and you gotta do it three times. I'm gonna show that. Um, then you gotta do the shading three times. I'm gonna show that as well. Then you do the line work, uh, and then after I get the line work done, I do the background. So I always start with the main piece and the main focus of the piece first, then I do the background. If I have a piece of a character that I wanna do, I put the character on, I fill him out, I do the line work, I color him in, I finish him off, and then once again, I do the background. I do things a little bit differently digital, but when it comes to the paintings, I do it this way first because I wanna make sure that I know everything's gonna look good, and then I can take my time on the background individually, and I don't have to focus on too many things at one time. I feel like doing it step by step is more important because you can focus on each thing as it comes instead of just rushing through all of it and feeling like, oh my God, there's so much to do. If you break things down into smaller steps, it feels like it takes less time and it just feels easier to get done. So next thing we're gonna do here, obviously then, is we're gonna do the main colors. So once again, I'm gonna do the entire main color thing and I'm gonna speed that up for you guys so you can see me do that quick. And then we're gonna go into a second and a third layer. So I'm just gonna do the first layer, then I'll probably stop, talk for a quick second, explain why I do three layers, and then we'll get back into it and we'll do the layers. So here we go.
All right, cool. So that's the first layer. That's the main fill, base coat, first coat, first piece, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. The point is, this is the first layer of the piece that I've done for paint-wise. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna zoom in a bit and I'm gonna show you exactly why you have to do two to three layers for sure. Now when I say two to three layers, the reason I say two to three is because it depends on the color. So I'll zoom in. See this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf? The colors there look very uh, scribbly. They look like Crayola markers, okay? Now if you look close at the blue, it also has that Crayola marker look, as does the purple and everywhere else. So that's the reason you gotta do two to three layers. Um, this purple here, for example, might only need two layers. I always do three layers to be safe anyways. I say two to three layers for everybody else. And when it comes to a color like um, the petrol blue, okay? I'm just gonna show you off on the side here. If I pull out this one and I do a nice long line, it's still scrapey, I promise you that. But if I did a second layer of that, it wouldn't be as scrapey and you could probably get by doing just two layers. Point is, two or three layers, three layers more importantly, let's get into that second layer. Okay, so here we have layer number two. I'm gonna zoom in again, show you the difference. I'm sure you can already see the difference, but we'll get in there. Now the purple is a little bit wet still, so that looks kind of flimsy, but I'll bring it up a bit. Now you can see that the green, the blue, they look pretty solid at this point. There's a couple little blotchy points. There's a couple little spots, like especially uh, right here, I can see in the camera, it's a bit lighter, you know? Um, but generally it looks pretty crisp. So. Again, that's why I say two to three layers, but like I said, I like to be super safe and super clean. I like to be thorough with my efforts, and so I do three layers no matter what. I just feel like it works out better. I feel like it's really important to do. Uh, if you want a high quality piece, I feel like three layers is going to give you that most solid look that you can get. Uh, you could even go four layers if you wanted to. I haven't done that. I've only done that on whites. Whites, you really need to like cover it over a lot of time, so sometimes you got to go four or five layers with the white when you're doing highlights and different things. Uh, especially when you're going over, let's say I go over the blue with a white shine. I'm gonna do that three, three times for sure and sometimes four depending how thick it was able to go on. So anyways, let's do this third layer and then we'll get into the shading. Okay, there we go, three layers. Now, I have to say one thing. I know that that seems monotonous and annoying and it takes forever and it's repetitive, and it is. There's no denying that, but it does absolutely make a huge difference. There's one thing I wanna point out right now that I can see that this happens sometimes and I know that it's difficult to, um, to fix. There's only one thing that I've ever been able to do that kind of fixes it. It doesn't always work, but let me just show you first. So, uh, is it visible? Let's see, yeah, I think it is, okay. You can see there's little dots, little darker dots here on the on the blue. The reason that happens is because what happens when the paint dries is sometimes you'll get the paint and then you'll have a little spot. Let's say I do like a little circle here and it's like a thick amount of paint coming out and you'll have a little bump, just a little like really wet bump. It's wetter than every other part of the spot because you ended off there. So what happens was you built up a, like a paint bubble. It's not, there's no air there. It's just more paint in one spot and you can't really do anything about it other than if you go over it and you end up having a bump here, there's a little bump here, I can see it. Just dab it down, you go over this, just dab it down, go over, just dab it down, same thing and just do that around those dots and get rid of those dabs that you end off with and usually that'll cover over those darker areas and that kind of helps it look more smooth as well. So I'm doing that now and I'm gonna see if it makes a difference and I'm pretty positive it will because I've done it before. Like I said, sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't, but usually it does. So once I'm done this, I'll zoom back in and show you that those dots pretty much should be gone. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom this back in a bit. Now, like I said, it's not perfect, but it definitely helps. You can't see the, uh, the blue dots very well. They're generally gone, mostly. There's like one or two that are there. 
And uh, you can keep going over it and keep trying to get rid of it, or you can just move on and hope that later on it won't be noticeable. It's really up to you what you want to do. Um, for me, I try and cover it up, and if I start to get frustrated and I know it's just taking too much time at that point, I know that later on, in the grand scheme of things, once you do the line work and the shading and everything, it's probably going to get covered over anyways, or it's just not even going to be, it's not going to be noticeable to the eye unless you're really like down in here looking in at things and trying to like really examine it like a professional uh, art gallery inspector with the magnifying glasses. But anyways, yeah, so you can see it looks nice and clean. We got the three layers, now we're going to get into the shading. Um, I'm not going to go super, super heavy on the shading because time wise I just don't want the video to be way too long for you guys uh, but yeah so generally when I do shading I do three layers I'm not trying to show you how to shade I'm not telling you which way you should shade or what angle you want to pretend your light source is from whether it be this side or this side I normally put my light source light source on this side and then I have the whites on this edge of everything and the darks on this edge which is what I'm gonna do now but that's got nothing to do with what I'm showing I'm just showing the process of the actual painting itself and how I go about it and the steps I take to do it so, yeah, enough talking, shadows. Okay, so now that's layer one of the shading. I didn't do an amazing shading job by any means. I wasn't really going for amazing or anything like that. I was just going for something simple and basic to get the idea across. Um, so yeah, simple. And we're going to do the second layer of shading now. Okay, there is layer two of the shading and I'm actually glad that I used red here because this is a perfect example of not needing to actually do a second layer. Uh, sorry, a third layer of shading for particular colors. If you look, that red is pretty damn crisp and solid. The orange is actually pretty solid as well. And this dark purple, other than this little section here, is pretty good. I'm going to use purple again here for the third layer, but that's the tiniest little error. I really don't have to. I'm going to do it anyways because, like I said, I like to be thorough. But point is, you can see that there's a difference between darker colors and lighter colors sometimes and sometimes you don't have to do that third layer. Anyways, here we go. All right, and that's the third layer. Now I see right here, I'll show you. This, this color here, I see a little bit of scrapey look. So I'm gonna do a fourth layer on just those parts because I don't want it to look like uh, I half-assed it. Let's go over that one more time. Like I said, some colors, they come out a little bit, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to say wishy-washy, because whatever. And you have to kind of go over them a few more times sometimes than others. Just depends on the color you're going over with the color, so if you're using one color over another color is what I mean by that. Sometimes it goes, doesn't go over the first color as well, or sometimes some of the markers just aren't mixed very nicely. And like, I find with a lot of the grays, for example, they'll come out kind of um, uneven tone. It's like the mix doesn't want to stay mixed very long. So you have to kind of really keep shaking it a lot and you gotta keep on going over it to get that perfect consistent layer. All right, there we go. So that's three layers of shading, three layers of base. The next step would be line work. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so line work. Line work is absolutely, to me, one of the hugest, most important steps of all of the steps. In my opinion, if you don't have clean lines, your art is gonna look like crap. Whether or not it's beautiful, it doesn't matter because your lines need to be clean. If you don't have clean lines, you need to practice your clean lines. And I promise you that that's very important. If you're able to go like this and get a generally straight line, that's really good. That's not a very beautiful line. I'm not going to deny that. But if you can do it straight as possible, that one's better. There we go. That's what you want to be able to do. So it's hard. 
but it takes practice and you gotta work on it. What I usually do for a straight line, not that this is a straight line tutorial, is I lock my wrist and you just use your arm to pull back and you don't move your wrist. If you move your wrist, you're gonna get a curve. Your wrist is gonna curve, but if you just lock and pull, you get a straighter looking line. So anyways, that's besides the point. Line work, here we go. Okay, one thing I wanna say is when I do line work, I first off, before anything, I do a thin line set around everything and then I thicken the lines up. The reason I do that is because I wanna make sure that my lines are nice and clean and the marker's not thick enough to do a thick line right away. If it was, I probably would still just use this instead because I'd rather do a thin line and then do the thickness because if you do make a mistake, you can cover it up a bit easier when you start off small. So, having said that, let's begin! Oh! One more tip, when doing line work, if you have an angle that you can't get, make sure you flip your page. It's, there's nothing wrong with doing that to rotate the page and get a good angle. For example, right here, I'm gonna have to rotate in order to get this angle nicely right here. So I'm gonna do that, and then I can come around and do this real sick. Okay, there we go. As you can see, I had a, a bit of a marker failure here. That does not happen very often. I don't think that's happened to me in years. Unfortunately, it happened today. It just so happens to be when I'm making a tutorial. That's okay, I'll fix it. That's like I said, the cool thing about paints, man. It's, you can cover over shit when you make mistakes and it still looks just as good as it would have otherwise. So it's pretty nice to have that ability. Unfortunately, sometimes certain pieces you're working on in whatever medium doesn't give you that uh, forgivingness, but these do. So just like this, it's basically done. I'll have to do a layer or two of the blue that I just covered over here, because it smudges a bit when you go over black, but generally it looks crisp again, so there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is the thin line that I do. Now I just wanted to stop and say this, well first I wanted to stop and explain what happened there and now I have to explain the fact that I used the wrong color also. Um, but anyways, I wanted to stop here just to show and to say that the way I do line work isn't the way everybody does line work. You don't have to do thick lines, you don't have to do thin lines, you don't have to do any type of line you don't want to do. You don't even have to do lines if you don't want to. I choose to do lines, I think it makes the piece come out more, that's the way I do things. So. Once again, with this entire tutorial, this isn't how everybody does shit. This is how I do things. And I don't want people to go away thinking this is the only way. It's not. You can explore, you can try different things and do whatever you want to do and come up with your style of art and the way you do, like to do things. And I encourage that highly. This is for the people who are trying to understand how I do it and also just how to get that nice, thick, uh, contrasty, poppy, like solid layering that I do and so mostly that's what it's for is the coloring rather than the line work. Anyways, I'm going to start on the uh, the thick lines now. Okay, there we go. So the line work is done and I think it looks pretty clean. It's nice and so the next step now is to do the highlights. Once I do the highlight, well, this is where it gets a little bit back and forth. So sometimes I do the highlights first, and then I'll do the little tick detail thingies that I do, the little black lines inside and just like the little extra details. But sometimes I'll do the background first. Normally, I actually do the background first, so maybe we'll do that. And yeah, we're gonna do the background first, and then we'll do the highlights and everything else, which makes it pop, and then we'll finish it off. So right now, we're gonna get to the background. Okay, so. Because this is on a random Molotow pad paper piece thing, um, I'm gonna have to make a canvas, we'll say, like a border. So I'm gonna do that, um, and then I'll fill in the background. I'm just gonna do a really simple basic background. I'm not gonna do anything too hectic. Um, yeah.
Okay, finally, there we go. Three layers of the background, each color. Good. Ah, that took a bit. It didn't take as long as the canvas would. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick too. On this paper, you might not be able to see it, depends on the lighting, I guess. But on this paper, the background colors are actually not even perfectly um, solid. The, this pink is, but this pink is kind of, you can still see a bunch of line streaks. It's not super bad, but the reason that is, is just because it's on this sheet of paper. Um, on a canvas, that wouldn't be nearly as visible to maybe not at all visible. So it just depends. Um, like I said, you can do four layers, you can do five layers, whatever you want. I'm sticking with the three. We're going to move on and fix up this line work that I messed up now. Um, after this, we're going to do the shining, which I guess that's kind of a stupid way to put it, but like the, the little white, you know, shine marks that I do. And then we're going to do a couple extra details. We're going to make sure everything's nice and clean, touch a couple things up if we have to, and then that's pretty much it. Um, I think I also might just add a black line around the border, just, just for like the sake of feeling like it's a, a bit more finished. So, you know what, I'm going to do the black lines now, then I'm going to fix these lines, and then we'll get to the, uh, the shiny things. All right, there we go. Beauty. Okay, so don't judge me on these lines out here. I didn't try and do anything special. I wasn't trying to be perfect with them by any means. I was just trying to get them done. I know they're a bit messy, but the point is I just wanted a line for my own whatever reason. I just wanted the lines there. They look like crap, but it doesn't matter. Okay, moving on. That looks great. And now the thing is, I gotta let this dry for a second before I do the next two layers, because when you do the white, it doesn't dry as fast as... Well, they all, it, it all drives... I can't speak today. It all dries the same speed, but when you're doing just little white splotches and you're finished already, that means that the first one you did isn't dry yet because you haven't taken much time to get to the end. So while we wait for that to dry, I'm gonna do the, uh, the details at the same time. So this would be the next step or a step that you can do along with this. Now, like I said, guys, this is the way I do my art, so you don't have to add anything that I'm adding right now. This is just what I do, and I'm showing you the entire process just so that you guys can get an idea of what I do. A lot of people ask about it, and I just thought it'd be worth going through the entire thing just to get all those details in so everybody can see exactly what's going on. So when I do this, I just do little line thingies. I feel like it adds like a nice, I don't know, it adds something to it. I, I don't know what the word would be. Maybe depth? Not really depth either. Just it adds some sort of level of extra detail that I feel like just makes the painting look more finished at the end of everything. So I just kind of shoot those around real quick. Do a couple here and there. Try not to go overboard and try not to go underboard either. I always do it, um, not always, but more often than not, I do it on the darker side of the shading. So. See how the light ends are over here? I have the darker, or the, I'll call these just tick marks. These tick marks, I put them on the uh, the side that doesn't have the light end. So this is the light blue here and the white. This is the darker end. It doesn't have a shadow, but it's a darker end. So I put the tick marks there. Put the tick marks here on the darker end, darker end. This is light here, but it's kind of coming off. So I figured I'd put one there. This is just under the light end. So you get what I mean. I just put it where I think it should go. And there, and then sometimes I'll do little tiny just random like little dot marks. So I feel like that also adds a bit of detail to the piece before I finish it off. I don't like the way this looks right now. It's because it came out very thick, but I'm gonna leave it for the sake of time and the sake of just don't feel like fixing it because it's not that big of an issue. Here. Okay, there we go, beauty. Now, don't have to do three layers for that, it's just black so you can stick with the one layer. Now I gotta go back to this white. Cool. All right, so another detail sometimes that I add, like I said, final details are at the end, is um, just like random bubbles. So I'll just do a couple bubbles, just to make this piece look a little bit more finished, feel a bit better. All right, cool. And then this final white layer. Sometimes I forget which ones I did. Okay, there we go, perfect, great. Okay, now 
I want to get rid of that little white mark. There go. The final thing I have to do is this one line here. Let's fix it up. This is technically the touch-ups part right before the last step, which is nothing. The last step is to look at your picture and be happy with it. Notice the flaws that you can fix for next time. If you're going to make a post, make a post. And there it is. So, that's the, you know what, no, this is going to bother me. I have to do these lines better, because if not, I'm going to go crazy. So we'll consider this a final touch-up detail as well. Technically this is what I would do anyways at the end, I would just do like um, on the sides of the canvas, I would color in the border. So let's just pretend that this is the canvas border and I'm coloring that in. Okay, there we go. Now I'm satisfied. I feel much better about that. It looks nice and finished to me, even though it's not going to go anywhere or do anything special. I'm happy about it, and I can say that I'm happy that we did this video, and I hope that it works out, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And one second. Okay, cool. I dropped my lid for the black marker. By the way, this is only in a blue marker casing because at the time, I think my black marker was kind of messed up, so I used an empty blue one, put black ink in it. Anyway, okay, here we go. So now it's done, piece looks good, it's all finished, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over really quickly and briefly to summarize the basic rules, and I'm gonna list them on the screen. They're gonna like come up and shit, which is gonna be pretty cool. I haven't done that yet, so I'm just talking about how I'm gonna do it, and then you'll see it. Um, so let's get to that now. All right, so let's quickly go over everything. Number one, we did the pre-sketch, which was always in light yellow or light blue. Make sure you always use light colors in order to get a nice, simple sketch that you can always cover over with any other color. Second, we want to do the main fill. You want to do three layers every time. Once you finish your main fill three layers, you do the shading. You also do three layers. Once you finish that, you get into your line work. I usually start with a thin layer of line work, and then I thicken it out if I like to. That's up to your choice. Number five, I do the background, which I also do three layers of color in. Once I finish the background, I do the highlights on the centerpiece, and if there's going to be highlights on the background, I do that as well. So we do that. After the highlights, by the way, you do three layers, once again, of the highlights. After that, we get to step seven, you do the extra details. Whatever little marks you want to add, whatever details, if you want to add drips or bubbles or any sort of other thing to whatever kind of piece you're doing, obviously not everybody does these styles of pieces. After that, you just touch up everything that you maybe think might need a little bit of fixing. And then that's pretty much it. Once you're done, you're done. And that's the last step, just being finished and posting your work so that everybody can see it. I guess that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, let me know in the comments if you thought this was okay. This is the first actual official kind of tutorial video I've done. I'm not sure how it's going to come out yet because I haven't edited it. But once I do, I'll know if I like it and I would like to find out how you guys think of it. Um, if you do enjoy it, maybe I'll do some more tutorials in the future. This was kind of fun. And I guess that's the video. So, cool. Let me know if there's any questions. Drop a like, drop a comment. Make sure you sub if you haven't yet. I'm always going to be posting videos in the future, whether it be sporadically between long month gaps where I don't do anything or whether I do things constantly and I keep posting almost weekly. So yeah, cool. Take it easy guys, hope you enjoyed the video.